All right, should we, should we start? Yes, okay, cool. So thank you so much for coming here because it's been like, what, two years since the original restock happened? Hello, okay, we're good. I'm just nervous because obviously this is a massive crowd. Thank you for being here. Before we get into the talk, as always, let's acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that we're gathered on today. Um, so my talk is gonna be about beginner saltwater aquariums. Where's my little clicker thing? Oh, here it is, <laughs> cool. So let's, oh, we need to go back. So let's uh, give a little introduction to myself. So I'm 19, I'm a local Melbourneian, lived here all of my life. And uh, I've also been keeping fish for basically all my life. However, on videos I say it's been 13 years because that's just when I was like carrying buckets by myself and I didn't get help from my parents. Shout out, they're up the back somewhere, wandering around. <laughs> so um, uh, because of them, I, it's the main reason I've been able to grow this much, make videos. Um, I've now got an X bedroom because the bedroom was converted into a fish room. The bed's now like somewhere else, so we don't really have guests in our house anymore. They don't have anywhere to sleep, so a <laughs> massive shout out to them for uh, accommodating all of my, uh, all of my needs. I've kept a whole range of freshwater fish, cichlids, tetras, planted tanks. What else is there in freshwater? It's pretty boring, isn't it? No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, don't shoot me. <laughs> but um, I've been keeping saltwater tanks for the past 12 to 18 months, and it has been absolutely amazing. But before getting into saltwater tanks, there was a lot of things that made me nervous about the process, about you know how easy it to set, is it to set up a saltwater tank. The cost, the... The idea, like there's so many things, a lot of stigmas around setting up a reef tank where I just wanted to provide a little bit of clarification about that today. So that's sort of what we're gonna talk about. And um, currently I have six tanks, uh, four of them I think. Yep, four of them are fresh water, two of them are salt water. And um, we'll have a little bit of a closer look about my tanks as well. But oh, I've got a clicker here, moving on. Um, why salt water? Well, um, why not? That's it, thanks for attending my talk, goodbye. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, no, but really, why salt water? So, I think the, the best thing to, to look about when you're considering why a salt water tank is just to look at the difference. And honestly, the main difference is just salt. That's, I, I, I honestly, I tried to list more things here. I couldn't think of anything aside from salt, like I tried my hardest, but um, let me show you what I mean. So. This here is my first ever saltwater tank. The picture is on a very weird angle. This was like my very early days of YouTube. So you'll see like hopefully the skill of video making get a little bit better as the photos go on. It's a little 30 centimeter cube tank. Anyone could buy a tank like this. I believe it's like $30 at Pet Stock or Pet Barn or some, some place like that. And um, it's just run with a hang on back filter. It's a pretty simple system. There's nothing complex or crazy about it. Some basic corals, basic tank, pretty budget light. I think I bought them on eBay. I didn't have a job at this point, so again, the quality, you'll see them get better as the photos get, you know, moving on. Then we upgraded to this. Look at that, classy, a blue background this time. We've got some good quality lighting. Um, and again, this is just a 50 centimeter tank. It's a very basic, run-of-the-mill, empty glass box tank. And then I just sort of Frankenstein a bunch of different equipment on there. And another recurring theme you'll see is a bunch of easy corals. And also Nemo, who doesn't like Nemo? If you don't like Nemo, please just stop listening to the talk now. But um, then we move on even further. Again, very easy, simple saltwater tank, but the skill and the quality is getting a little bit better. Aquascaping, we've got a little hammer garden. Um, and we'll clarify all of these little like saltwater jargons that I'll throw out a little bit here and there. And now we get into my current saltwater tank. Everyone go, wow, that looks awesome. <laughs> yes, <laughs> mission accomplished. <laughs> so this is my current saltwater tank. It's a 40 centimeter cube ultra low iron glass. Oh my God, it's crystal clear. Um, we've also got a Seachem Tidal 75. Again, a very basic higher end hang on the back filter and we'll get into the equipment a little bit later. Heater, it's a basic Petworks 50 watt heater. If you've got a nano tank, you've probably got one of these heaters in there as well. So a very basic heater. We've got a Dymax SpaceX Marine Light made by Elon Musk. No, I'm just kidding. Elon didn't make it. It's just Dymax used that name for their brand. A bit weird, yes. But um, all of the equipment that's running this saltwater tank, aside from the Marine Light itself, 
can run a freshwater aquarium that looks just as good, if not better. And that's what I'm trying to get at here. You can run a fantastic freshwater tank, but for almost the same equipment, you can run a pretty decent looking saltwater tank, if I say so myself. I think it looks great. I'm kind of liking this tank more than a lot of my freshwater tanks, but again, I, yeah, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, the only difference, the only difference with the equipment on this tank is mainly the quality of the equipment, and secondly, a protein skimmer. Fancy words, freshwater people won't know what a protein skimmer is, but we'll clear that as well. But the real difference, the real difference about the saltwater aquarium world is, firstly, the cost. Saltwater aquariums honestly do cost a little bit more, and I know I just said that you can run the same sort of equipment on a freshwater tank, but at the end of the day, there's a lot of other factors that come into place like salt water, salt water, unless you live in Albany, like simple aquariums where you can just go to your beach and collect salt water. Unfortunately, salt is pretty expensive. So those are sorts of things that are a little bit different. Next up, I feel like I'm leaning a little bit, so I'm just gonna increase this. Okay, cool. Um, the next up is the process. Obviously, the process of running a salt water tank is different as well, because you've got to mix salt water. Some of the care requirements are different for corals, for fish, for equipment. The maintenance you need to do is a little bit different. The general care, the overall care requirements like we touched on are different, and experience. It's usually better if you've got a little bit of experience running a freshwater aquarium before you head into salt. Who here has got a freshwater tank? Just yell at how long have you been keeping freshwater aquariums for? Forever, too long, okay cool, that's good. That means you basically set yourself up for a successful saltwater tank. And let's actually have a look at, <laughs> let's have a look at the salt itself. So salt water, obviously you can't just throw corals in a freshwater tank, it's pretty obvious, but the salt water itself is, is pretty important. And the, honestly, I feel like that's the most daunting aspect of a saltwater tank. So here, that's a, that's a picture of me mixing saltwater in my very ghetto saltwater mixing station. I've just got a 20 litre bucket, a box of salt, that exact very box of salt right there. Um, and I just mix it in this bucket with a uh, little mixing pump. And you can actually get salt water in two different varieties. So firstly, there's synthetic salt water, like that bucket over, can you guys see that bucket up the back? Okay, cool. So that's the brand of salt that I use. And it's synthetic salt that you'll need to get water, put the salt in, mix it up, and, uh, and go from there. And that is an Aquarium Solutions brand of salt. Thank you. Um, and you can test what's called your salinity. So, that, so your salinity is basically how salty your water is. Very weird way of saying it, because it almost feels like I'm cooking when I say that, like salty pasta water, but that's basically what you're aiming for when you're making a saltwater aquarium. And something that I can show you with that is, Give me a sec. So this uh, telescope looking thing, that is a refractometer and this will test your saltiness of your salt water. And um, it's basically like a telescope. You put a little dab of your salt water over here, you look into it, it's working, uh, and you can see the actual level of salinity. I'm gonna pass this around so you guys can have a look if you've never experienced a refractometer before. But um, you'll see like where it'll be like half white and half blue. Where the blue ends is like where the level of salinity reading is. But let me give this to you guys. Here you go. You can have a look, pass it around, do whatever. <laughs> Don't do whatever, just pass it around, have a look. <laughs> but um, um, moving on, a lot of aquarium stores, saltwater aquarium stores, actually go ahead and sell pre-mixed saltwater. So that way you can just take a bucket, a barrel, a bin, take it to them, they'll fill it up, charge you a couple of dollars for the salt water and you can walk out with pre-mixed, ready to go salt water, which is great. It's almost like Uber Eats for salt water, but they don't deliver it. Um, and um, the refractometer that's going around, you can check the salt uh, salinity level on that as well. Um, look at, hold it up to a light source, you'll probably be able to see it a little bit better. Um, and it almost looks like everyone's just looking at me because you guys are all pointing it towards me. Please look up. <laughs> um, but, uh, then we get into what kind of tank. So you've worked out your salt water, where you're gonna get it from, and now what are you gonna put that salt water in? And um, this decision will really, really help with the budgeting. And the cost is something we're gonna talk about when it comes to running a salt water tank big time because the budgeting is sort of how you prepare for what your salt water aquarium is going to be like. You know, what type of salt water are you gonna have? 
And um, let's have a look at the, the terms that are thrown around for different saltwater tank options. So firstly, you've got the mixed reef. That's what I've got, the 40 centimeter cube tank that you saw before. And these are, in my opinion, the most beautiful saltwater tank. However, they're also the most expensive saltwater tank as well. Then we've got a soft coral only tank. And this is where it's still pretty cheap to run, but you can have a little um, you know, easy selection, an easy smorgasbord of corals in there that um, give you the same sort of feeling of a little slice of the ocean, but it's not as bare as a mixed reef. And then we've got a fish only system, and that's where you can just enjoy the saltwater fish. Having a Nemo in your, you know, your living room or on your kitchen bench top is so amazing. But um, let's have some, a closer look at some of the pictures. So this here is a, oh, thank you for that, Sam. So this here is a, uh, a freshwater, uh, uh, okay. so this here is a fish only saltwater tank. And it's basically just a freshwater tank with salt. So it's got the same equipment, it's much, much cheaper, it's much easier to take care of because you don't have to worry about corals, you don't have to worry about dosing things for your corals. It's just a very simple way to run a beautiful but also simple saltwater aquarium. It's great for your experience because when you get the basics of a fish only saltwater aquarium nailed, you're inevitably gonna get into coral. I'll admit, I started off my saltwater aquarium thinking, I just want clownfish, I just want to enjoy Nemo. And then I got corals because I wanted Nemo to have a home. And then I wanted the corals to have friends. And then I wanted the corals to have a family. And now I've got way too many corals. So <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, the addiction catches on. Um, then we've got a soft coral system. So this is generally how saltwater aquarium will transition. And um, my tank was actually just gonna be a soft coral only tank because I wanted it to be pretty simple, but then yeah, the addiction caught on, I got more corals. But again, it's basically the same equipment. The added cost is usually just the price of getting those corals because again, you can't just get corals for free as great as it would be. Um, it looks like a reef tank. It looks like a, uh, you know, if you were to, just to dunk your head into the Great Barrier Reef, with goggles, obviously, because bare eyes would hurt, um, you would be able to see a little slice of the, uh, of the ocean. And again, it's great for experience. Once you nail the, uh, the beginner saltwater tanks, you can then move on to some of the more hardy, a bit more challenging coral, and inevitably the bug will catch on. I'm telling you that now, because I've experienced it firsthand. It's a fun bug, but it's a very expensive bug. <laughs> I'm speaking out of pain. <laughs> but um, let's have a look at my most favorite of these systems, and that is the mixed reef the saltiest of a saltwater tank. Um, and it's much more complex, but honestly, it's so, so worth it. I mean, how cool does this look? Yes, I'm showing off my own tank right now, but look, I really like how it looks, okay? <laughs> so um, it's classy, it's colorful, and it's cool as hell. So it's very similar equipment. It's, it's very close to running a, uh, again, a, a very high-tech freshwater tank. So if you've got you know, a, a high-tech tank with high-quality lighting, high-quality filtration, um, maybe some CO2 in that tank, it's some of the same principles. Once you nail that level of complexity, something like this is pretty much a breeze. Um, and it's only more expensive because of the corals and some of the additional and more expensive equipment that you may need. It's way more colorful, it's got way more complex biology, and coolness points. If someone comes in, sees your house with some goldfish, they're gonna be like, okay, they're goldfish. But when you've got a good looking saltwater tank, you are like the go-to person in the family. Everyone will wanna be over there because you've got a stunning saltwater tank. But um, one of the main questions that I get a lot is, are saltwater aquarium rocks alive? One of the, um, the things that you'll hear about in saltwater tanks is live rock. Everyone will be like, have you got live rock in your tank? And uh, when I was setting up my first saltwater tank, I got really concerned because I thought I now have to like feed my rocks and make sure that they've got like the correct temperature. That isn't really true. So the aqua the, in your aquarium, the rock is going to be like the basis of your saltwater tank. In freshwater tanks, how we think about like substrate for plants, that's basically what rock is like in your saltwater tank because it houses a ton of microbiology. It's got things like sponges, copepods, feather duster worms, snails, starfish. Sometimes very creepy looking critters live in your rocks, but they all play a part in the biology of a saltwater tank. And that's one of the things that I love the most in a, in a reef tank, in a saltwater tank, just how much life you can find. And a lot of it you get for free. Like I got 
about 30 or something starfish when I just bought corals. And then they just started reproducing. And now whenever like someone comes over, I can be like, hey, you want to hold a starfish? And basically I'm running like a little Melbourne Aquarium touch pool in my room for family. It's a very cool feeling. But then we move into coral time. Who likes coral? Yay, good, good stuff. So corals, in my very humble opinion, are one of the best things about a saltwater tank. Firstly, if you're like into biology and you're like a science nerd, they're one of the most interesting and complex living organisms ever because they're like an animal but a plant at the same time. That's the best way I can describe it because they eat, but they also use like sunlight to make food, but they also eat. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay, cool. <laughs> and um, the easiest, or some of the easiest coral options if you are considering a saltwater tank. And these are all corals that I currently have and corals that I very much like. So that little purple guy, purple guys over there, are, um, are mushroom corals, and they grow like mushrooms. They're like, uh, they're basically mushrooms in a saltwater tank. That's the best way I can describe it. Um, then we've got zoanthids. Zoanthids are those ones there. Now, zoas have a reputation of being toxic. They are, just don't eat them and you won't die, but they are pretty toxic, but they're also a very easy and, uh, and beautiful coral to take care of. They're like little flowers and, um, I'll admit, when I first got a saltwater tank, I didn't really want zoanthids because I thought they all kind of looked the same. But now I've got about 40 something. The addiction really catches on and they're all like little colors. It's almost like Pokemon, like gotta catch them. Oh yeah, that kind of thing. So I've got a lot of zoanthids at this point. I've also got hammer corals. Hammers are those ones over there in the corner. And um, they're called hammers because Look, personally, I don't see it, but they're called hammers because like the little tops of their corals look like little hammer shapes. I don't know who came up with that name, but they definitely don't deserve to be naming things because they're not hammers. If anything, they're like little marshmallows, but not hammers, definitely not hammers. <laughs> then we've got a toadstool leather. Ooh, interesting name. That's a toadstool leather. Again, I don't see the toadstool aspect of it, I also don't see the leather aspect of it because they're pretty slimy, but they're easy to take care of, so good. Um, candy canes, all of these names, I don't know who came up with them, but as I'm saying them now, I'm like, these, they, they're just, they're dumb. Candy cane, what? They're not even red and white. Um, and then we've got the elegance, this name, perfect name. That, that there is an elegance coral. That's probably the main reason I got a saltwater tank because they look absolutely amazing. I made a care guide of them on my channel. Shameless plug, check it out, it's a cool care guide. <laughs> but um, if you are considering to get an elegance, if you are considering to get a saltwater tank, sorry, definitely get an elegance. Then send me pictures. If it doesn't have an elegance, don't keep saltwater tanks. <laughs> but um, moving on, fish. Who likes fish? Good stuff. Saltwater fish. Also one of the best things about a saltwater tank Firstly, clownfish, Nemo. Who doesn't like Nemo? It's Nemo. And um, one of the mottos of my saltwater keeping journey, if you've got a saltwater tank and you don't have clownfish, you don't deserve to be keeping saltwater tanks again. I've got a very strict and stringent set of rules. Clownfish in a saltwater tank is one of them, okay? It gets me very angry and very passionate if I don't see clownfish in a tank. But um, clownfish, obviously you've got your basic Nemo and Marlin colors. But now, because of captive breeding, you can get some pretty crazy colored clownfish as well. That there is a black storm clownfish. It looks more like a cow, but it's a black storm. They're like $800 a clownfish, which is nuts, but you can get some crazy colors. Those are, I believe, Picassos. I've got two Picassos. I almost had a heart attack when I bought them, but they were just so nice that I had to have them. Um, and then we've got stuff like a fire goby, a yellow assessor. That fish acts a drunk in a tank. I've got one of them and it swims upside down. Left, right, upside down. It never swims like a normal fish. It's just upside down all the time and it looks up at the sky. It's very frightening, but also hilarious to see at the same time. And then pajama cardinals. I don't see how they're wearing pajamas, but we've learned that names just don't make sense. Moving on. But 
Cost and quality, let's compare the difference, the real difference between a freshwater and a saltwater tank. So this is a freshwater tank that I own. This is a, a breeding tank, so I've got bristlenose plecos in here that I'm looking to breed. I need to get some caves from those Easy Cave guys, they look pretty cool, but um, this tank has just got two sponge filters. These sponge filters you can pick up online for what, like $10 on eBay, delivered straight to your doorstep. Air driven, very cheap to run. I think I've just got like a Bunnings light on there, very cheap once again. And it's just a basic glass tank. You can probably set up a, a freshwater tank like this for I'd say honestly under a hundred bucks with room to spare for more fish, which is great. That's why I have four freshwater tanks and I'm constantly adding more. Again, it's an addiction, but moving on. <laughs> um, why are salt water tanks expensive? Like we've said they're expensive for a few different reasons. But I'll admit my 40 centimeter cube tank has this information is wrong. I say 700 to 900. It's definitely more than that. I was thinking about it this morning and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, that could have gone to my uni fees. But um, yeah, it's a lot of money. I've, I've spent a lot running a, a saltwater tank. And this includes the fish, the coral, the equipment, the, uh, the, the chemicals that I'm using to run a saltwater tank. But it all makes sense because yeah, it's all expensive, but it's proportionally expensive because Reef tanks, they're a sensitive and delicate environment. I'm, I'll admit, I've skipped water changes for like three weeks on my freshwater tanks. The fish are thriving, the plants are thriving, they're all doing good. But in a saltwater tank, you honestly start to see a difference. They're a very delicate environment just because of how much life is in a saltwater tank. Also, saltwater is corrosive. If anyone's got my refractometer at the moment, I, I do need that back at the end, please, thank you. Oh, it's there. Um, you'll notice anything metal on there has got rust on it because salt rusts things. So you've gotta be very careful about the equipment that you buy. I have bought like eBay wave makers and they last for about a month before rust just totally eats them up. It's very terrifying, but also very kind of cool, but also expensive. So you kind of get the picture. Um, and because of that, you need long lasting equipment. And long lasting equipment is generally a bit more pricey. And certain equipment and chemicals are exclusive to a saltwater tank. You can't just go ahead and run your ADA or uh, what's another brand of freshwater plant fertilizer, whatever, you, know, you can't run freshwater plant fertilizers on a, uh, on a saltwater tank. So some of those kinds of equipments are very, very different. And let's have a look at those. So one of the main things, and I mentioned this word a little bit before, a protein skimmer. So that's the exact kind of protein skimmer that I have there. It's a very low end protein skimmer. So a lot of like the high end saltwater reefers here that aren't watching my talk are probably gonna see me as like a disgrace because it isn't like, you know, like a Ferrari of protein skimmers. It's more like a Toyota Corolla, but hey, it does the job, okay? So <laughs> that is my protein skimmer. And what a protein skimmer basically does is I feel like to explain this, the best method is to look at a freshwater tank. So you've got you know, your canister filter and um, your canister filter will take out all the gunk, store it. You'll then need to break open the canister filter once every six months. Yes, we don't do it every week. Once every six months to a year. Um, and then you've got to clean it out. A protein skimmer kind of does that job for you a little bit. Basically what it does is um, uses a bunch of air in that little column chamber thing. And, uh, and it catches all of the little, little bits of gunk and um, little bits of like oils and things that are in your saltwater aquarium. The way I would describe it is like a flush system on your toilet for a saltwater tank that's running 24 by seven. So it basically captures all of those little oils, all of those little bits of dirt, and it moves them up from that chamber into that little cup. And that cup is outside of the tank. It doesn't have any contact with the water in your tank and that way, all of that, that gunk, all of that dirt is captured in that cup and you just open it, rinse it out in the sink. I've been banned from doing it in like a house sink. I've got to do it in the laundry room now because it smells, like it smells a lot. My parents are right there and yes, they'll, they'll yeah. <laughs> I get like a look of death, like a glare of death whenever it smells. It smells, yeah. <laughs> just keep that in mind. <laughs> and um, you also need trace elements. So these are basically fertilizers for your coral. Certain things to keep the parameters of your saltwater tank at the level that they should be. And let's have a look at a shopping list. So what are the things that you're gonna to have to consider when you're keeping a saltwater aquarium? Well, firstly, you've gotta consider the location because where you set up your saltwater tank will really make a big difference on what kind of saltwater aquarium you set up. How close is it near a sink? How close is it near a window? Because window means sunlight, sunlight means algae, algae means maintenance, and maintenance means 
nuisance. I don't like maintaining my tanks. I just want them to do their own thing, okay? Water changes were a pain. Automatic water changes are the future. <laughs> Anyways, um, then you've got to look at what's available online, both brand new and second hand. There are so many tanks that Reef has closed down um, and they put on sale and they're great prices. They've got everything, the equipment, the filtration. Maybe the tank might be a few years old, but that just gives you the ability to renovate, make the tank to the quality that you want it. And um, you can also go for brand new. I bought all of my equipment brand new from aquarium stores online and in person just because I can make like videos on you know, unboxing the products and reviewing them. You know, as a content creator, you have to consider these things and usually that means you're spending more money. It hurts, yes. <laughs> but, um, then um, we, we have to look at a budget. And um, I've actually made a, a full on shopping list. If anyone wants it, just like message me on, uh, on Instagram or like Discord or Facebook. It's in my YouTube channel description. But I'd recommend having about $500 or more. And that sounds like a lot, but is it really? Because when you think about a freshwater tank, what do you do? You get all the budget equipment, and then you're like, ha, ah, that, uh, that light looks really nice. I've saved up for it. Let me buy that. And then you buy a good filter, and then you buy a good heater. You know, the, the price adds up, right? So it's just a single investment to get into a saltwater aquarium. I feel like a real estate agent right now, you know, put in your down payment. It's 10 month interest. <laughs> I don't know how real estate agents work. I've never bought a house before. Um, and then just go for the tank that you find is most convenient. A lot of the times people say, you know, go for the biggest tank that you can afford. And um, I can, I, I've listed that here, but I haven't said afford, I've said maintain. Because honestly, I feel like if I was to get like a six foot saltwater tank, which I could fit in my room, but one, my parents would kill me, two, um, it's just gonna take off way too much time for me to afford. You know, if I've got an empty spot in my living room, that I can fit a massive six foot saltwater tank in, I'd probably fit a three foot saltwater tank and then put like a coffee table or a couch. Interior designing with Bodgy from Australia. But, um, and, and I only do it if you're passionate. A lot of the times you might get peer pressured, and yes, this has happened, it happened to me a little bit, but you get peer pressured into getting a saltwater tank, getting certain equipment, getting certain fish, because your reefing friend has it. But only get a saltwater tank if you're passionate about it, because you'll lose interest very quick. Because again, you're doing a lot of bit more maintenance than you are on a saltwater tank than a freshwater aquarium. It's easy, but it's just a bit more labor intensive. And research what you're buying and why you need it. I've seen this trap happen way too many times where someone will buy some sort of equipment because someone told them to buy it and they don't know what they're using that equipment for. They get really annoyed because of that equipment. They just quit the saltwater tank. I've seen this happen three times, like in person where someone has told me, I bought this, I don't know why it works. I don't want to keep saltwater tanks anymore. It's sad, but it's a reality. Frequently asked questions. Now I can go through these questions if they're questions that you have, but I would ideally love to hear questions from you. People that ask a lot of questions get prizes. I'm just putting it out there. I've got a few things that I want to give away. So any questions, anyone, whatever the question is, and it doesn't actually have to be saltwater related. Like we can just spend some time talking here. That's really what I want to do. But um, yeah, question, go for it. Yeah. Yeah, let's go into that. So just to repeat that question, about the three different times where people have quit saltwater tanks that I've personally seen firsthand, what were the equipment that they purchased that they just didn't know how it worked? Well, the first one was an RODI system, and you'll see that actually here as a question. Do I need to have an RODI or can I use tap water? Now, an RODI unit is basically just like an incredibly overkill filter for your tap water because, well, with our tap water, depending on where you live, there's a bunch of additives that get put in there, obviously for human drinking, so they add things like fluoride, chlorine, chloramine, um, and there's also a ton of heavy metals that can be present in your salt water tank, uh, in your salt, in your tap water. You don't get salt water in your tap. I hope you don't, because that would be very bad. But um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of heavy metals, whether that be through your piping. A lot of old homes have copper, um, copper pipes. That isn't great for a salt water system. And um, an RODI is basically just a bunch of chambers that your water passes through. And there's different kinds of materials that filter out some uh, uh, certain different things. So there's carbon, this will take out like your chloramines, there's resin, this takes out the heavy metals. And this gives you basically just like straight H2O. It's the purest of pure water. 
Um, and what you then do is add in a bunch of different minerals to bring up the parameters to what you need in a saltwater aquarium. And a lot of the times RODI systems are very complex. I bought one, it was about $250. I still haven't set it up and I run tap water. I wouldn't recommend it, but my tap water is very, very clean. I get my water provided by um, Melbourne, Melbourne Water City, yeah, so, someone like that. They have clean water. My parents know, they pay the water bill. Um, so we get very clean water and um, that way I don't really have to worry about anything harmful being in my water. But if you're unsure, you can search up a water quality report um, about your local uh, water provider and they can provide you a report of exactly what's in the water and you can cross reference that with what you should have in a saltwater aquarium and what you shouldn't have in a saltwater aquarium. Any other question? I've got a, a little man's hand at the back. Let me run up to you. Hi everyone. Yeah. My favourite coral. Good question. Ah, 10,000 steps for the day. Okay, cool. My favourite coral. Favourite coral is the elegance. I showed it to you in a, uh, can we go there? Yep, that, the, the, that one there, an elegance coral. The reason I got the elegance coral is because I really, really, really wanted an anemone with my clownfish, because like a clownfish and a nem, they're like a match made in heaven. The unfortunate thing about anemones is they're more animal than they are plant when you consider it to a coral. Corals are like gobsmacked 50-50. Anemones are a bit more animal, so they eat, they also poop a lot, and the other thing is they move. They've got a foot. They've got a single foot. It's like a horror story and they move around the tank. There are two issues with this. I really like my corals and anemones pack a punch. They sting. If you've got pretty sensitive skin, I think that some people can actually get like stings from anemones. I don't because I'm strong, <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, anemones move and they will actually sting all the corals in their path. Corals are expensive. I like my corals don't come near them. So an enemy is out of the picture. Secondly, when they move and then you've got something like a wave maker in your tank, the anemone will oftentimes like end up in the wave maker. And because the enemies are basically like a sludgy slime looking thing, they get churned up. Like they become an anemone smoothie in the tank and they release like a couple of hundred thousand of their stinging cells into the aquarium, just like nuking all of your saltwater tank. It's very chaotic. I don't want to go through that pain, so I don't have an anemone. The elegance is the closest thing that I can get to that because it has a solid like skeletal foot. It doesn't move anywhere. It sits in one place. It still stings. My clownfish still host it. So it's like a win-win situation, right? It, and if anyone like that doesn't know saltwater tanks asks me, is that an anemone? Yeah, I'll admit, I lie. I say it's an anemone. Coolness points. So what? <laughs> Another question. Yes. Cool, easy fish. Easy fish to keep in a saltwater aquarium. Well, these are some of them. <laughs> so, um, like we talked about clownfish. Clownfish were the first ever um, saltwater fish that I ended up getting. My heart was fixed on them. So I actually got these guys here. I got the, uh, the common Ocellaris clownfish. They're your basic orange and white striped clownfish. And um, I actually have four clownfish now. So I've got one tank that has my orange clownfish and one tank that has my fancy Picasso clownfish. Um, I haven't named them. Does anyone have any name suggestions? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> hey. I said a Picasso clownfish. Picasso's like an artist. He's out of my time, out of your time. I wouldn't worry about it. He painted some very weird looking paintings, in my opinion. But um, yeah, so clownfish, one of the first fish that I ended up getting. Um, from there, I got the yellow assessor. The yellow assessor was actually a, a cheap substitute for, let me end the slideshow, let's go a bit off track here. Where's Safari? All right, let's, let's have a look at one of the, the fish that I very, very much like. Royal, grandma, look at this. We're going completely off script. I didn't have a script. I didn't prepare for this at all as well. I'm just like winging it. You guys have been an awesome audience. Thank you, by the way. Um, so, 
This here is a is a royal grammar. Can you guys see that picture? It's very small, right? Anyways, uh, royal grammar. He's actually in like this fish itself is in Finding Nemo. Um, he's in the tank gang, like in the in the tank when Nemo gets put in. His name is a uh, is it Jacques? No, Jacques is the shrimp. Anyways, he's a very paranoid fish in that saltwater tank. But these things look so beautiful. They're about hundred and fifty dollars each. But I had my heart set on one, and I bought it. I re do I regret it? Financially, yes. Hobbyist-wise, no. It's a great fish. It's pretty easy to take care of. But saltwater fish are pretty expensive. The reason for that is because a lot of them are actually caught from the wild, and that means that they are caught, you know, potentially on the other side of the world or the Great Barrier Reef. They are then brought into a wholesale facility where the wholesaler needs to take care of them, make sure that they are used to captive life in an aquarium, because as sad as it is, you know, it's a, it's a big open environment. Yes, there's like predation and everything in the wild, but in a captive aquarium, it's a smaller environment. You know, there are lights right above the water surface for almost 10, 11 hours a day. Um, and there are certain things that a fish has to adapt to, you know, behavior wise in, in captivity. So the wholesaler needs to, you know, take on all of these. A lot of the times fish will pass away um, and all of these sort of sorts of costs, you know, get put into place. Also, I only discovered this, uh, you know, recently. There are divers that actually like dive into like rocks, like go upside down and like catch fish with a net. They can't use like a fishing hook because you know that damages the fish. So, to catch a little fish like this, a diver probably has to spend like half an hour to a, you know, one or two hours depending on where it is. That's a lot of time. So, so what a fish can be pretty expensive. My, um, my pair of common Ocellaris clownfish, they were about $60, so that's 30, 30 each. The Picasso clowns were about $150 for the pair. So it goes to show you, you know, captive breeding isn't really a thing in saltwater aquariums just yet. It's starting to pick up now. But um, yeah, there are all these sorts of things that come into play where there are great beginner options, but a lot of them are pretty expensive. So you're gonna work it out towards your budget. Any other questions? We're going on a roll here, yeah. Minimum tank size, great question. So best beginner tank size, is it like beginner tank size or minimum tank size for a fish? For saltwater, yeah, cool. So my current tank is a 40 centimeter cube. I would honestly suggest going for, and in terms of volume, I believe that's around 70 liters. Um, US gallon wise, I'm familiar with gallons just because it's just easier for a fish tank and be like 10 gallon, 20 gallon. I would go for a 20 gallon tank. That's a 60 centimeter by 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter tall tank. Um, also known as like a two foot breeder tank. It's a great versatile tank because you can keep a lot of different corals, a pretty good mix of different fish in a tank size like that. And the other great thing is, because it's a long tank, it almost, you know, you can sort of fit it into a lot of places. I'm sure that, you know, anywhere in your house, you'd have a spot to put a two foot tank in. And that means you can have a lot of two foot tanks. Yeah, a two foot tank I'd recommend in terms of nano tank size. If you're going for a larger tank, like you've gone, you know, full scent, I'm committing to this, I'd go for a four foot tank. It's 120 centimeters by 60 by 60 centimeters. And that way you can keep a lot of different fish. You could keep a dory in that tank, Nemo dory, a yellow tank. That's awesome, yeah, why not? Bubbles in a tank, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'd say a four foot or a two foot tank. That way it's like if you've gone for a nano tank, perfect nano tank size, big tank, perfect big tank size, four foot. Another question, I'll go for you this one for, yeah. Good question, give me a fist bump. I like that question. We're on a roll, I love these questions guys, by the way. So how much time does it take for me to maintain my saltwater tank? So if I was just to do a water change for my 40 centimeter cube tank, I'm gonna say probably about 20 to 25 minutes. Now there is the whole time of mixing salt water. So usually how I do this is my water changes happen on a Sunday. So what I go ahead and do is on a Saturday, I'll fill up my bucket, add my salt in, put my mixing pump. The salt will mix overnight, so I've got good salt water ready. On the Sunday, I'll go ahead and drain the 40 centimeter cube down to about 
uh, and then I'll just pour the salt water straight in. There isn't really much I need to do in terms of like gravel backing the salt water tank or in terms of you know cleaning out my filtration. The reason for that is because my filter is purely there just for biological filtration. It's purely there to cut down on my ammonia and nitrite, nitrate in the tank. All of the, uh, the gravel vacuuming and like waste removal, my protein skimmer handles that because it takes out all the gunk from my aquarium. I don't have to gravel vac my sand bed because I have a pretty chunky snail in there. He's called a stromba snail. Um, it's uh, basically like a, a lawnmower bulldozer vacuum cleaner for a saltwater tank. If I had like a Roomba in a saltwater tank, that's the best description that I can give. Let me show you what a strombus looks like. Uh, no, not a royal grammar strombus. That would be a very weird hybrid. Uh, strombus snail. Uh, that thing. He basically has like an elephant trunk and he's got a massive shell and a foot and he just uses his foot to like move and just vacuum the tank. It's super cool to see, and he's got these big, like, googly eyes. It's, it's great. So... I know. Is the nitrogen cycle the same, and the only thing that's different is the salt? Yeah, pretty much. Good question. Let's go through that. So, great question over there. So, is the nitrogen cycle in a salt water tank the same? So, for those of you, like, real beginners that don't know what the nitrogen cycle is, it's basically how an aquarium is cycled. And uh, it's the process of the waste of your fish, the ammonia that they create, that's the chemical. It's the, it's the process of the waste that your fish make in very toxic waste and breaking that down into something less toxic. And in a saltwater tank, it's exactly the same. You would cycle a saltwater tank in the same way that you would for a freshwater system. And the thing that I really like doing and the thing that I really advocate for is using bottled bacteria. There's a lot of really great bacteria brands. Again, Aquaforest has got a few different options that you can use to cycle a tank. And um, I basically just buy that bottle of bacteria, dump it into the tank, wait for a few days, buy another bottle of bacteria, dump it into the tank, wait for a few days, then get my fish. The bacteria in a bottle is a great option just because there's so much bacteria that's loaded in that bottle. And it just fast tracks your cycle. And that way I don't need to do like the typical old school four to six week cycle. Cause who wants to get a tank, set it up for four to six weeks and then just like not get fish in that time period. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, so another great question. Can you just have a coral tank? Does it have to be with fish? And you can absolutely have a coral tank. So a lot of, uh, a, a, actually a new growing trend is a pico saltwater tank. And that's basically a nano of a nano. It's like a very small tank. I've seen people do pico tanks with like jars, like two gallon tanks, 10 liter tanks. And those kinds of systems are too small where they can't actually support fish. So you can definitely have a massive tank as well with corals. Um, and yeah, there are so many people that actually do that. Uh, I actually have a tank at the moment where the plan was just to do corals. It's a, it's a small 10 gallon tank. And um, it was meant to just be used for growing out corals, but I added clownfish in there because I really like clownfish. <laughs> yeah, awesome. You guys have been an absolutely legendary audience. Thank you so much for everyone being here. All the people walking around, thank you for attending the Underwater Pet Expo. And um, yeah, that's it for me. I'd love to answer any other questions up here, but yeah, thanks for watching.